Hello, my name is Eleanor Drager. I'm a junior doctor and I'm a member of the BMA Junior Doctors Committee. And I'm here to talk to you about the work-life balance right that you have in your contract. And I've been asked to talk about this for two reasons. One is because I'm a flexible trainee myself, so I know very well that you can have good work-life balance while working as a junior doctor. And the other is that I've been the flexible training rep on the Junior Doctors Committee for some time now. So there's a few areas that we need to talk about in this clip. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about annual leave and entitlements to that and various other types of leave that you can have. And then I'm going to talk about flexible training and how you can apply for that, how you're eligible for flex flexible training and how it works for you and give you some more information about it. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is annual leave. All junior doctors are entitled to annual leave. When you first start, you're entitled to five weeks of annual leave a year. Once you've been working for a certain number of years and or you've reached the right incremental point on your pay scale, you're entitled to six weeks of annual leave a year. This is sometimes divided, defined differently as a number of days. And when you start work for any new employer, they should be able to tell you if it's a number of weeks or a number of days that you're entitled to. The full details of when your incremental point changes can be found in the junior doctor's handbook or on the website. The other types of leave that you're entitled to are study leave, bank holidays, maternity or paternity leave or adoption leave. The full details of all of those are found in the junior doctor's handbook or by ringing Ask BMA or by looking on the BMA website. Not all doctors are able to work full time for a variety of reasons and a way of achieving better work-life balance is to train flexibly. This can be done, um, anybody is able to apply to train flexibly and you have to fit into a, certain, into a couple of categories in order to be eligible to train flexibly in this country. The categories are divided into category one and category two. Broadly, category one is where you're either sick yourself, you're caring for a sick relative or you have to care for children un who are under the age of seven. The category two would apply to anybody who needs to have time off work to train for a specific religious training or to train for the Olympics or to do BMA committee work or other committee work for another national committee. At the moment, m almost all deaneries are accepting category one trainees um, automatically and many deaneries are accepting category two trainees. So the best thing to do is to phone up the deanery or look in their website and ask them how they how they're applying the rules at the moment. The other option for achieving more work-life balance is to take a career break, which is another entitlement in your contract, which you obviously have to agree in advance with your um, postgraduate dean and employer. An example of someone who's recently taken a career break is a doctor who recently won a gold medal in the Olympic canoeing at the Olympics in Beijing. If you've made the decision that you'd like to train flexibly or take a career break or otherwise arrange your working time differently to that of a full-time doctor, then what you need to do is set out trying to apply for it and the first thing to do is to go onto the deanery website and look and see what the application process is. Once you've made an application and you've been accepted for flexible training, then you should be in post within three months. Just to say that if you've decided this is the way that you want to go, be persistent in in finding out information and finding out what you want. There is still a perception among some doctors or senior doctors in the profession that training part-time is not as good or not as valuable, and that's absolutely not the case. And if you do want to train flexibly and you have a valid reason for doing so, then you should try and achieve that aim as far as you can. If your application for flexible training has been rejected, then you do have the right to appeal enshrined in the contract. What you need to do in that case is to print out the appeals form, fill it in and send it back to the deanery and they have to reply within 30 days. Full details of this can be found in the principles document which is on the website. The aim of this video clip has been to outline for you some of the areas of the contract which enshrine your rights to do with work-life balance. Many doctors believe that the contract is only there to talk about your hours and pay, but in fact it 
It talks about a whole load of other things, I hope which I've outlined some for you today. If you do have any problems regarding any of these areas, then you can call Ask BMA if you're a BMA member. In addition, there are full details regarding all of these things to be found on the BMA website or in the Junior Doctor's Handbook, which all BMA members should have been sent.